After the backroom series, game pixels again caused much discussions with the oldest view series. Most of the action in the oldest view take places in a more located underground and looks so realistic that many people think it was filmed in a real mall. But it is an animation created in the free program Blender. Everything is is Blender, right? Every at like one yes, hundred percent. Yeah. I had a bunch of people even on TikTok. No, there's real video. I was like, dude, like. In this video, I will show you how the process of creating a CGI mall and animation looks like. To find out, I spent an entire month creating my version of the mall you are watching right now. This is a breakdown video, look for the full animation, project files or a 10 hour long step by step tutorial in the description. Everything is much easier in CGI if you use references from reality. The mall from the oldest view is a replica of the value view mall from Dallas which was built in 70s and demolished in 2019. I started the creation of the mall by collecting as many reference images as possible. Of which the floor plan or blueprint is the most important. The floor plan help us to create the basic structure and place the elements in place. In the first step, it is essential to add only basic shape of approximately real world dimensions, more details we will add later. Looking at some interviews, I found that most of the 3D models were built by 3D artists Corrupt15, while Kane did the rest of the work such as lighting, materials, animation and post-processing. Um, well, I kind of started working on the mall uh, by myself in like February 23rd. And I would go in, uh, texture it, because he, he's just doing the, the modeling work. I haven't found a better floor plan than this one from Kane's render, which doesn't have all the details, but I believe that Kane and Corrupt had a lot more information about the mall. But I think there's an image of like every place in the mall. Yeah, in yeah almost folder every place. Like a thousand images. Um, yeah, like way more than a thousand. Since it is a multi-store mall and I've never be there, connecting the photos to the floor plan was like putting together a puzzle for me. But with finding more photos and watching a few videos, I was able to connect a lot. After creating the basic structure of the mall, it was time to add more details. I created the holes between the floors with loop cuts and the knife tool. Tip. Use the knife tool only after adding as many loop cut lines as possible, only for angles that are not parallel to 0 or 90 degrees. If you start with the knife, the loop cuts will no longer work and you will create a mess. I added thickness and more detail to the walls with extrude insert and bevel. To get the fence, I duplicate the edges three times. I turn the first edge into curb with the help of extrude and extrude along normals. Second edge I turned into curves to which I add thickness and got a handle. I extrude the third edge added a bunch of loop cuts, which I turned into fence with the wireframe modifier. The columns with this retro lighting and plugs are a recognizable part of the mall, so I invested some time in making them. This is what the speed up process looks like, look for the step by step process on Patreon or by clicking on YouTube join. One subscription unlocks all tutorials and assets.
I created a version with and without light because I will need both later. The most recognizable part of the mall is the Central Park with the elevator, escalators and fountain. Since the whole part is symmetrical, I used a mirror modifier. That way I can model only one side and mirror the other. As usual, I first create a basic structure to determine where what goes and how big it is. After that, I continue to add more details. Tip, to get a bevel of reverse profile, it is necessary to press P after Ctrl B. To get a custom bevel, after Ctrl B, you can change the profile type to custom and shape the bevel as desired. These bevel options were very useful throughout the mold creation process. Modeling the fountain is uh, quite simple, I use mostly extrude, insert and bevel. When using extrude along normals, it is necessary to make sure that the faces go in the right direction. I imported the escalators from Sketchfab because modeling them would take too long, even for a step-by-step -step tutorial. It is the only external model with these plans, which I didn't model myself in this project. The textures I use are mostly low resolution, below 1K and mostly of low quality. I use a lot of screenshots of free Lumol from YouTube videos or CC0 photos from Flickr. Since the scene is big, I paid a lot of attention to the size of the photos. For roughness and bump maps, I use mostly the same concrete texture everywhere. The only material that has multiple maps are these tiles that cover most of the mall. For them I used a free polygon texture that I modified by adding one brown tile to look like in the real mall. In the places where I pass with the camera, I often upgrade the materials in the last step. For example, this low resolution plasterboard texture, which I isolated and mixed, give a lot of realism in some places where the camera looks. I try to make a similar a version of the chairs and table that can be seen everywhere in the mall. 
This is a speed up process. See parts 32 and 33 for details on modeling and texturing the table and shapes. Stores are the most important part of the mall and require a lot of work. I modeled a total of 28 of them. Of course, this is not enough to cover the entire second floor, but it is important to cover the parts where the camera passes. I have used some stores twice. It is important that they are not close to each other and no one will notice. In the step-by-step -step tutorial, I modeled and textured two stores in detail. This is what the process looks like. When texturing, I try to use photos of real stores from Value View Mall to make them look authentic. In addition to the Blender file where everything is together, I also shared files with separate assets that are adapted for the asset browser for those who want to create their own animation. I didn't want any light from outside and I based the lighting on the lights coming from inside the mall, following the reference photos. The lights inside the stores are also important for lighting. Although I want to achieve the impression that the stores don't work at the night, little light that comes from the emissive billboards, monitors, vending machines, etc. 
inside the stores gives a lot of details. If you project an image of the store on a low poly interior and plug it into emission and emission strength, the bright areas will emit light. With the matte node and color ramp, you can control the intensity and the area that lights up. In combination with motion blur, and if they are not too close to the camera, these lights will look realistic in the background and create a lot of detail. Keep in mind that in closed spaces, the cycle render may take longer and have a lot of noise if there is not enough light. I learned that lesson well in this part of the mall with less light, especially since I turned off the spotlight that I use on most other parts of the mall. More lights means faster rendering and less noise. In order for the mall to look realistic, more details are needed. For that we need assets. In this step, I took some time to build assets that can fit into the mall. The assets that go inside the store are mostly low poly with low resolution textures. For the ones that go outside, I paid a little more attention to the details. When I modeled enough assets, I added them to the asset browser for easier use. I also created these thumbnails because the default ones that Blender creates sometimes look bad. For the camera animation, I use camera shakeify add-on just like K. It is a combination of hand keyframes and uh, tracked camera motion recorded by uh, brilliant uh, VFX artist Ian Hubert. Simple keyframe insert in combination with the camera shakeify predefinited movements are the simplest solution for realistic working around the mall. The final Blender result looked good and I didn't want to change much in post-processing. I decided to test the Boris FX Sapphire plugin and I was surprised by the possibilities. Sapphire has 270 effects and more than 3000 presets. Each of the effects offers a large number of settings and much more control than similar effects that come with for example After Effects. For example, After Effects offers Glow and VR Glow while Sapphire offers 9 effects just for Glow with many controllers. Fortunately, each effect also offers presets saved by other users, which is my favorite option. By clicking on load presets, I simply choose what I like if I don't want to spend a lot of time playing with the settings. Of the effects that were very useful for the project, I will single out the lens flare auto track. You just need to select the lens flare preset and the effects does the tracking and everything else. Look for a link with a trial version and a discount in the description. For the final render, I use about 1K resolution and 100 samples, which is not enough, especially in some places with less light. I wish I could have added more samples, but since 10,000 frames had to be rendered and the average time was about 1 minute per frame, 7 minutes of animation took a whole week to render. In Kane's version, the main star is Rolling Giant. I didn't found a good Rolling Giant model and creating my own version would take a long time, so I decided on this model. It's a photo scan of doll from this museum that I found on Sketchfab. I recently started a Discord channel where I am happy to answer your questions. Look for the link in the description. This is the final result. I do CGI tutorials, I don't write stories and scripts, and the 7 minute animation serve as an overview of what you can learn in the tutorial. Rolling Lady is here to make the walk in the mall more dramatic. Thank you for your support, if you like the video click like and subscribe. But the, the first track when the, the lights turn on, that was actually done by uh, uh, Josh Augustine. Enjoy re
trading environments. Mm -hmm. now, what's your uh, Instagram handle again, Corrupt, so people can go check you out? Yeah, um, you it's it's all lowercase. Corrupt, corrupt, number fifteen. Corrupt, corrupt, fifteen. Corrupt, yeah, corrupt, fifteen. Instagram. And we'll we'll put that in the description as well.